Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. We got enough water in that tub, don't you think, huh, Frank? After a few minutes, the amount of water doesn't matter much, Tiny. We're wasting it now, don't you think? So we're wasting it, so what? Yeah, I guess we don't care. In our water, Bill. How's Joe doing? He hasn't moved a finger for a couple of minutes. Maybe we better pull him out and have a look. Yeah. Hmm. Looks the same as before we pushed him under, don't you think? Yeah, he does. We better keep him under a little longer. Nice place Joe has here, don't you think? Sure is. I always wanted to live upstate in one of these small towns. Trouble is, there isn't enough opportunity in a small place. Huh? Uh-oh, the phone. Better answer it. Okay. If it's Smitty, tell him we'll see him in the city as soon as we get back, which ought to be early in the morning. Okay. Hello, what you want? Hello, I'd like to speak to Joe, please. Uh, you want to speak to Joe, huh? Yeah. Uh, just a minute. Hey, Frank. Hmm? It's a dame who wants to speak to Joe. Wants to speak to Joe? Just a second. Too late. He's dead. Okay. Hey, uh, lady. Yes? Uh, sorry, lady. Uh, Joe's out. Oh, I see. Um, this is Valerie Johnson. When will he be back? Uh, he didn't say. Uh, when he went out, he wasn't talking. Well, is Frank Horton there? No. When Joe comes back, will you tell him I called? Okay, lady. I'll tell him when he comes in. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Frank. That was your fancy covering, don't you think? The dame wanted to know if you was here, but I said no. You did right, Tiny. Now turn off the water, will you? Okay. Who was that, did she say? Yeah, uh, Valerie Johnson. Oh, yeah. Joe's girl. Hmm. Um, what do we do with Joe? Leave him here for his girl to find? No. We'll take him to the city with us tonight. Let's see. It's almost midnight now. If we leave right away, we ought to be in the city before it gets light. Yeah, if we drive fast. But what do we do with Joe? You call Smitty after I leave you and the two of you dump him in the river. I have to go home and get some rest or I'd help you. What do you want to rest for, Frank? The big job we just pulled will keep us healed for a long time, don't you think? Yeah, it should. But last time I stayed up all night, I slept all the next day. And I couldn't watch him feed the sea lions at the zoo. They get fed at 2.30 every afternoon. Oh, what do you care if the sea lions get fed or not? Tiny, my day isn't right unless I watch them jump after those fish. I tell you, my day just isn't right. <laughs> And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Hello? Uh, hello, Smitty. Yeah, uh, this is Tiny. Oh, hi. You and Frank back from Portic already? Yeah. We just got in a couple of minutes ago, and Frank went home to get some sleep. You got Joe with you? Uh-huh. Uh, Frank says me and you were supposed to dump him in a river, and you'd know where. Why the river? Well, Joe's drowned. The river's a natural place for a drowned man to be, don't you think? The river's no good, Tiny. You never know when a guy's going to turn up and embarrass you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, how about the lake? No, that's not fair to sailors and their girls out in the boats. Um, uh, maybe we ought to take them back out in the country and dump them down a well. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, a well. Well, Frank says we ought to dump Joe somewhere in the city where nobody will know him. And when Frank Corton says something, we do it, don't you think? Sure, but let's not make it the river. Too many patrol boats these days, and they got cops watching the lake, too. Hey, wait a minute, Smitty. Huh? I got the perfect place to dump that body. Yeah, and what a joke that's going to be on Frank. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, Mary, here we are. Last stop, all out. <laughs> Thanks for the taking me shopping, Blackie. When my car is fixed, I'll take you sometime. Well, let's not make it as early as this, though, huh? Oh. I don't mind getting out at 9 in the morning for you, but I just as soon not do it for myself. You're just selfish, that's all. What are your plans for today? Well, for one thing, there was a robbery and a murder last night. I heard it on the radio after you woke me up at that phone call. Well, that means you're going to see Inspector Faraday? That means I am not going to see the good inspector. I'm keeping away from police cases if I can. Especially as you and I have a two o'clock appointment this afternoon. A matinee, oh, remember? Oh, Blackie, I've forgotten all about that. We'll have to change the tickets for later in the week. Why? I promised Aunt Martha I'd take my niece to the zoo today. Well, it's only ten o'clock. It doesn't take all day to look around a zoo, does oh, it? Oh, I know, but little Helen wants to watch the sea lions being fed. And their feeding time is until 2.30. What am I doing now, playing second fiddle to a bunch of fish-eating sea lions? All right, be jealous if you want to. <laughs> but you'll have to admit a sea lion has awful cute whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to shave for two days, and I'll take Helen to see you. How's that? <laughs> Don't you ever miss watching me toss fish to the sea lions, Mr. Horton? Wouldn't miss it for the world, Sam. <laughs> hey, Barco really had a jump for that one, didn't he? Nah, he didn't have to. Big Barco just likes to show off. Hey, watch what happens when I throw him this one. <laughs> <laughs> he almost gobbled up little Junior going for that one. With sea lions, fish come first and children later. Watch Daisy go for this. <laughs> Oh, bad bro. You made Daisy die for that one. You think she doesn't love that? She got a big laugh from the crowd. I'm surprised she doesn't rear up and take a bow. <laughs> hey, the kids sure go for the sea lions, don't they? Yeah. Look at them all. Hey, there's an awfully cute little tot. The one with that pretty girl over there by the rail. That pretty girl is Mary Wesley. You know who she is? No, oh, who? Boston Blackie's girl, that's who. The little doll's her niece. Brings her here every once in a while. Well, here's the last fish for the sea lion. Throw this one to Barco, but make him go a long way for it. Right. Here she goes. Ah, that's my boy Barco who did that. Went halfway across the pool for that one and gave his fans a splashing, too. He's some performer, that Barco. If he's ever missing, I'll know where to find him in your bathtub. <laughs> well, I guess the fun's over for you. Hey, what's the matter? I don't know. I... Hey, Mr. Horton, look at the edge of the pool there. Huh? There's a body floating in the water. All right, Parker, get that crowd back and make it stay back. we got to have room to operate. What's with the body, Connor? He's dead. He's going to stay dead, Inspector Faraday. I know that much. What can you tell me about him? Well, I say this fellow's been dead at least 12 to 14 hours, maybe 16. Oh. In that case, he died sometime between uh, 10 last night and 2 this morning. All right. This zoo is locked up at 8 at night. It isn't open again till 8 the next morning. What did this guy sneak in here to commit suicide for? Or didn't he? I guess so. He died by drowning. Suicides go to crazy lengths to kill themselves sometimes, Inspector. Yeah. You know who this fellow is? No, no identification on him. All we found on him was a gun. I sent it to the lab for tests. Yeah? I just wonder if this is the guy I'm looking for. You mean the man who held up that warehouse safe and killed that guard yesterday? I mean just that. He knew we were going to nab him sooner or later, so he turned yellow to beat the chair. They're all yellow, these tough guys with guns. Hello, Faraday. Oh, hello, Blackie. I'm glad to see you. Blackie, what are you doing here? Oh, it's a long story, Faraday. Where do you want me to begin? At the end. Now, go away. I got work to do. And no brain to do it with. Oh. Uh, what'd this guy do? Jump in the sea lion's pool? Yeah, but why? Maybe he likes fish. Maybe I don't like you. And what do I mean, maybe? Blackie, for the first and the last time, beat it. Oh, please, now, Inspector Faraday. Miss Wesley, you too. Yes, me too. In fact, I'm responsible for Blackie's being here. I was watching the sea lions when this man's body came to the surface, so I phoned Blackie. Who is your dead friend, Faraday? I don't know. But I suppose you do. He's just like you. I all never... wet. <laughs> I never saw him before in his life. Was he drowned, shot, stabbed, or strangled? He drowned himself. You mean he slipped in here in the middle of the night, climbed high wire fences to drown himself in a sea lion's pool when there's a nice lake just outside the zoo? How do you know he had to sneak in here to kill himself? I heard the coroner tell you how long the man's been dead. Okay, big ears. So what? So I don't think this man died here. Oh, he killed himself somewhere else and then walked here to be found, huh? No, I don't think he killed himself. That's all. I think he was murdered and thrown in the bottom of this pool. You know, Faraday, you can't keep a good man down. That probably applies to a bad man, too. Come in. 
Here's the lab report on the body found in the sea lion pool, Inspector Faraday. I thought I'd bring it in myself. Good, Bob. Thanks. I've been waiting for this. Uh, ballistics show the gun we found on him is the gun that killed that warehouse guard, all right? Yeah? I say the guy killed himself because he was yellow. All right, what's the report say? Well, I was right, Inspector. The man died somewhere between 10 and 12 midnight last night. Uh-huh. Dead 14 or 16 hours when we found him. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That means he slipped into the zoo to kill himself because he knew the place would be deserted. Go on, Bob. Well, water found in the man's body is a far different type than the water found here. Its iron content is 90% greater than ours. Huh? What does that mean? That means our man didn't die in the sea lion pool, Inspector, because he drowned in water the likes of which isn't found within a radius of 150 miles of here. Well, I'll be it. That blackie is always right. This means the guy was murdered. Now I have two killings on my hands instead of one. I don't even know who this victim is. It's going to be tough to identify, too, Inspector. There wasn't even a laundry mark in his clothes. We don't have his prints on file, neither does the FBI. That's a big help. That means the only thing we know so far is that the gun on him is the gun that killed that warehouse guard. <laughs> we don't know where the guy was killed. We don't know who he is. We don't know who killed him. We don't know why he was killed. Now, I could go on like this forever. Why don't you, Faraday? At least it'll give you something to do. Blackie, get out of here. I got problems. Well, tell them to me. I was a problem child. Yeah. I suppose you're pretty proud of yourself because you knew that guy in the sea lion pool was murdered. No, it was only a guess, Faraday. Just didn't look like a good place for a guy to kill himself. You see, if I were going to commit suicide, I wouldn't pick a sea lion pool. Oh, you wouldn't. But I got news for you. Go pick any place you like to do it. It'll be okay with me. The Faraday. Yeah? You've got an unsolved murder on your hands. I've got a few seconds on my hands. We'll put the two together and see if we can not come up with a handsome solution to this case. And now, back to Boston Blackie. A man is killed by drowning in a bathtub in a small upstate town. His killers take his body to the city where they dump it in the sea lion pool at the zoo. When the body is found, it looks like suicide, until laboratory tests prove what Boston Blackie suspected, that the man was murdered a long way from the zoo. Only identification on the body is a gun, which turns out to have been used the previous day to kill a guard during a warehouse robbery. As we return to our story, Blackie is in his apartment with his friend, Murray Wesley. Oh, Blackie, a fine afternoon, Mrs. Bin. Do you know how many phone calls you've made? I'm waiting for a return call on number 18 right now, Mary. And why? Because you think out of all the towns upstate that have water with a high iron content, you can find one where a man is missing. And you can do it in one afternoon. One afternoon and a hundred phone calls. If the afternoon is long... Oh, here's the call I'm waiting for. I hope. I hope you'll give up. Hello. Hello, Boston Blackie, is it? Yes, this is Blackie. Uh, this is Chief Williams of the Port Duck Police. You put in a call to me, did you? Uh, yes, I did, Chief Williams. Uh, tell me, do you have any recent report of a missing person in your town? I sure do. Joe Adams. You found him, have you? I don't know. What does Joe Adams look like? Ooh, tallish, uh-huh. black hair, light complexion, long, slight crooked nose. That's the Joe we found, then, Chief. Good. He's got his girlfriend to dither. She's been calling me every hour since last night trying to get me to locate him, she has. Will you tell his girlfriend that... That... No. Now, wait a minute. What's this girl's name? Uh, Johnson. Valerie Johnson. Nice girl. Prettiest thing in Port Tuck. Crazy about Joe she was. Well, you tell her that Miss Wesley and I are going up to Port Tuck. Miss Johnson must have liked Joe Adams. Maybe she can tell us who didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief Williams. Went into such detail about your boyfriend's death, Miss Johnson. I was just going to tell you that he was killed. He didn't commit suicide, Blackie. No, Miss Johnson. Inspector Faraday told me that the test showed that the water in which he drowned was not the same as the water in the city, but was the kind of water you have in this section of the state. And he was killed here? Here and here. Uh, Do you know who could have killed him, Miss Johnson? No, no, I don't. Well, do you have any idea why he was dumped in the sea lion pool at the city zoo? No, not the slightest. Joe told me he was in trouble, but I had no idea it was as serious as this. Well, what did he say, Miss Johnson? Nothing that I could understand. I see. He said he'd fallen into bad company, but that it would be all right pretty soon. Oh, my handkerchief, I'm sorry. Oh, here, I'll pick it up. There you are. Thank you. You, um, you and Joe were going to be married soon? Yes. 
this week. Uh huh. Well, uh, Chief Williams told me Joe had no family. <laughs> Do you want to come to the city with me and take charge of the body? I suppose someone ought to. Good. I'll wait outside with my friend, Miss Wesley, while you pack some things, and we'll drive you down. All right. I won't be long. Take your time. Poor girl. She must feel awful. Well, she sounds it, doesn't she, Mary? I could hear her out here, and she'll have to stop crying, Blackie, or she'll be exhausted. That girl wasn't crying. She was acting. Her handkerchief was completely dry when I picked it up. No tears? Not one. Mary, that girl is in this thing right up to her eyes. Hey, Frank, you sent for me. Here's what you want. You know what I want, Tiny. Uh, are you sore or something? Of course I'm sore. Of all the stupid places to dump Joe's body. Oh, that was a good joke, don't you think? It was a stupid joke because you don't think. Whose idea was that? Yours or Smitty's? Uh, mine. Uh, Smitty said the River Lake was no good, Frank. Too many cops. Oh, you could have taken him out in the country to dump him. And he had heart failure when he popped up in a sea lion pool. Well, look, Frank, what diff did it make where we dumped him? He'd pop up sooner or later, and he didn't talk when he dragged him out of the sea lion pool, did he? Ah, I suppose the gimmick worked all right. Last I heard, the police thought it was suicide because of the gun they found on him. Yeah, good thing the gun you killed that guard with was a stolen gun. Now the cops think Joe stole the gun and killed himself because they were looking for him for murder, don't you think? Well, Tiny, I could kid you for tossing his body in a sea lion pool. Well, that's talking sort of tough, don't you think? You know how I like it at the pool. And you were even hoping Joe's body would pop up while I was there, weren't you? <laughs> well, it's Smitty and I got a laugh out of it, Frank. We was there over by the monkey case. You sure did jump. I don't like your sense of humor, Tiny. And maybe I'm getting so I don't like you. Now, look here, Frank. Tiny, I... I told you and Smitty to dump that body, not throw it in my face. You think I like to look at a man I just killed? Well, nobody asked you to kill him. I killed Joe because I had to, and for your sake as much as mine. He wanted to go to police after I killed that guard at the warehouse. Said he didn't bargain for murder when he went in on that job. None of us bargained for murder, Frank. You didn't have to kill that guard. You could have just slugged him. After he got a good look at me? Oh, no. Well, if he didn't see me or Smitty or Joe, we could have got away and saved your dope for you until you got out. You'd like it if I got a murder rap, wouldn't you, Tiny? Oh, you no. You and Smitty could divide the whole hundred thousand just two little ways. Nah, Frank. Well, maybe I'm going to divide it one way and make sure there's nobody who saw me kill that... What time is it? Uh, ten minutes after two. So what? So I can just make it to the zoo by 2.30. My day isn't right unless I see those sea lions fed. I tell you, my day just isn't right. I beg your pardon, but you're the keeper of attention to the sea lion pool, aren't you? That's right. Who are you? Yeah, you wouldn't know me. My name is Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie? And you think I wouldn't know you? I know all about you. What can I do for you, Blackie? That fish you're loading in the basket there, that's for the sea lions, isn't it? Yeah, I feed them in about five minutes. Why? I want to take over for you today. What? See that girl over by the sea lion pool? Well, uh, well, yeah. I followed her here. I know she's waiting for someone. I want that uniform you're wearing and a basket of fish. And with the help of this phony mustache I'm carrying while I'm throwing fish for the sea lions to catch, I'm going to catch a killer. <laughs> Hmm. I wonder where the keeper is. It's 2.30. Oh, Frank. Huh? Oh, Valerie. What are you doing here in town? Surprised to see me? Kind of. I didn't know where you lived, but I knew I'd find you here. Joe used to tell me how you always come down here every day. Oh, he did, did he? You want to know? Wait a minute. There's the guy who feeds the sea lions. I've been waiting for him. Hello there. Hey. Hey, you're not the regular keeper. No, nope, that's right. He's sick. What about it? Nothing. I'm Frank Horton. He was going to let me help him feed Barco and the other sea lions. Not today, mister. He'll be back tomorrow. See him then. And don't bother me. I'm busy. Shout time, sea lions. Here. Catch. <laughs> Frank, forget those sea lions for a minute. I want to talk to you. I know. I want to know where Joe is. Well, I haven't the slightest idea. He left after we split the dope at a warehouse, Joe. Don't kid me, Frank. I know he's dead. And that you killed him. Keep your voice down, you fool. Oh, that super can't hear it. If he could, he wouldn't know what we were talking about. I'm not going to the police, Frank. About Joe, I mean. Go on. Joe was supposed to get 20000 out of that job. 
I don't imagine he did. I imagine I will. If I don't, then I go to the police. Well? I think we can make a deal. You two are pretty stupid to talk murder when I'm around. Frank, he's no zookeeper. That's Boston Blackie with a phony mustache. Oh, really? Well, what do you know? And Blackie, what do you know about this? Come on, Valerie. Blackie's out. Now let you and I get out. Fast. Do you remember what to say now, Mary? Sure, yes. And yes, can you remember how to say it? Well, I drove all the way down to Port Talk with Valerie Johnson, didn't I? Well, yes, you did, but why? Right, now, So was my head from that sock I got at the pool. Hello? Uh, Frank? Yeah? Uh, this is Valerie. Oh, you found out where I live, did you? Mm-hmm. I'm a clever girl. Too clever to want any part of any of this. I'm going to the cops. Are you? What for? You know what for. I'm going to tell him everything I know, and I know a lot. Look, Valerie, where are you? In the Park Hotel. Stay there. I'll be up in an hour. Oh, Blackie, it worked. He fell for it, huh? He'll be in Valerie Johnson's room in an hour. Perfect. And I'll be there waiting for him. Hello? Hello, Valerie. This is Frank. Oh, yes, Frank. Valerie, did you just phone me... No, I didn't. I didn't think so. I thought that was just one of Boston Blackie's tricks. What's up? Blackie is on his way up to your room. On his way up here? How do you know? Some girl phoned me just a minute ago pretending to be you and saying she was going to the police. I knew you wouldn't do that to me. What I do to you depends on what you do for me. I'll take care of you, honey. But first, we got to take care of Boston Blackie. <laughs> How soon can you get that trunk out of here? Practically right away, Miss Johnson. Practically right away. Yeah, I got on a rose now and just waiting for the guy who helps me. Well, go tell him to hurry up or I'll miss my train. Yes, ma'am. I'm practically on my way to tell him, Miss Johnson. Uh, you mind if I leave the door open? No, that's all right, but hurry up, will you? I'm practically hurrying as fast as I can now, Miss Johnson. I'll be back in just a minute. Let's see if I forgot me. Porter, I thought you the were... Porter didn't close the door, Miss Johnson. I did. Blackie. May I come in? I don't know why not. You're already in. And I see you're on your way out. The trunk is ready to be rolled away and everything. Yes, I'm leaving. Is this your trunk? No, it's not. It, it is belongs... your trunk, Miss Valerie. You live here most of the time, don't you? Or did live here. You've been posing as a little country girl, living a quiet life in Port Huck. But actually, you've been down here doing something crooked, I guarantee. I don't know what you're talking that about. That trunk, Miss Johnson, is yours. You certainly didn't bring one with you when we drove down from Portuck today. All right, so I have been living here part of the time. So what? So nothing. But thanks for being such a big help to me. You led me to Joe's killer, and when you led me to Frank Horton, you did exactly did that. <gasps> Don't turn around, Blackie, or my gun may get gay. Uh -oh. Frank, you must be part cat. You came out of that closet without a sound. Well, Horton, I thought I was going to wait for you, but it seems that you've been waiting for me. You don't think I fell for that phone call from your girlfriend, do you? Well, I was hoping you would. Would have made things a lot simpler. Things from now on are going to be very simple, Blackie. We'll go out the back way, down the stairs, and out to my car where Tiny and Smitty are waiting to take you for a sightseeing tour. Oh, you're taking me somewhere, are you? Sending you somewhere, Blackie. Properly stamped, but with no return address. That's right. And don't think they'll ever trace your death to us, either. Miss Johnson's trunk is packed and ready to go. Only you're going first and like a nice boy. Look who's talking about being a nice boy. Nice boys don't point guns and kill people the way you killed a nice boy like Joe. Nice boys don't turn yellow and want to run to the police because a guard was killed. Oh, that's why you killed Joe, is it? He wanted to go to the police because you killed that guard. That's right. Now, Blackie, let's move. I'm not moving. That truck is moving right at you. Right, right. Right. You can't shoot straight either, can you, Horton? Yes, I can. You don't get another chance. What you speak? Uh, open up in there, Blackie. Come on, open up. Come on, Come on in, Barney. And, Valerie, you better be a good girl and a quiet okay, Blackie, what's going God. on in here? Hey, you sound as if you expected me. After I left my apartment, I I told Mary to phone you and tell you where I was. There's your killer, Faraday. The man who killed Joe and also that warehouse guard. There's two boys downstairs. We'll get them. So this guy spilled everything, huh? Yes, after he was spilled by this trunk. Nice going, Blanky. Hey, this trunk is on wheels. Yes. It was just about to be carried out. 
What do you say we do the honors with Horton here instead? (laughs) 